Well, I think my, uh, dust is one, but it's sort of like, it's, it's almost the two extremes that if it's a nice, dry, good marching weather, you have some, the dust that A, gives you away to the enemy, but also kind of, you don't want to be at the back of the column, like you mentioned a couple of times in the book, because, I mean, you get dust all the time onto you. Or it's the other extreme that it's a rainy time of year and you, 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 you sink into the mud, you lose your shoes. Um, was there any time of like a good marching weather where it, like you didn't deal with these two extremes almost? Yeah, what, you, what, what they wanted. What they wanted were reasonable temperatures and just enough periodic rain to keep the dust down. So it's not muddy, but it's not dusty either. And you come across that at certain points in the war. When Stonewall Jackson swings around Hooker at Chancellorsville, mm -hmm. um, they're cutting that road as they go in some cases. But it's just damp enough that it's not throwing up much dust, which helps Jackson. Uh, but probably the best, the best example and I'm not the first to point this out, is Sherman's March through Georgia. Mm -hmm. and it rains, there, there are two brief periods of rain, just enough usually to keep the dust down for the rest of the march. And for Sherman and his men, it's ideal weather. The temperatures are ideal, the meteorological conditions are ideal. Um, David Ludlam, who was a wonderful weather historian, uh, calls it Yankee weather. It couldn't have been nicer. When Sherman gets to Savannah, he says, it couldn't have been nicer. We got really lucky coming down there. Uh, so there's an example where they had almost perfect conditions. Uh, but yeah, I mean, usually, it, at least as far as soldiers remember, it was either mud or dust. Mm 